Hi everyone, and thanks for tuning in to Tick Time. We're happy to have you with us today. I'm Jacob, your host for today's session, and I'm joined by my co-host, Yun Ke. Thank you, Jacob, and to everyone tuned in. Wherever you are in the world, welcome to the whole new era of search engine technology. As you may well know, Huawei is leading the 5G industry, and we have a wealth of information spread throughout our website, across web pages and within HEDEX packages. So you need some specific information? Who do you ask? Well, I'll tell you, you ask a smart search engine that thinks with its own brain. It doesn't isolate words, but connects them, forming a huge net that can uncover your intentions. We're giving you a mediator to facilitate communication with your own devices or network. And we're in a perfect position to do so, because we've gathered carrier customers' use habits over the last 20 years. Information that you desire is at your fingertips, and it's now easier to access them than ever before. This is not merely a search engine, it is an information guide. And to see how far we've come already, let's give Jian Chang a call, who has significant experience in the development of this knowledge search service. Hi Jian Chang, and welcome. Can you hear us okay? Yep. Great. Now, before we ask you to begin, I'd like to ask a couple of questions, if you don't mind. Firstly, in which Huawei documentation scenarios have knowledge graphs been applied? Well, in terms of Huawei documentation, we use knowledge graphs to build an enterprise-level knowledge platform. Then, based on the platform, we provide intelligent information obtaining services, such as knowledge Q&A, semantic search, and knowledge recommendation, as well as assistance in documentation writing. Okay, great. So, can you explain a little more specifically about what knowledge graph technology is being used? Knowledge graph implementation includes a whole range of processes, including modeling, extraction and integration, storage and management, as well as graph-based applications. I'll dig a little deeper into these processes later on. Okay, I guess that's our cue to get right into it then. Why don't we go back to basics and discuss how knowledge graphs are actually created? I believe that Yun Ke is sitting with algorithm engineer Yin Yuwei, who can dive a little deeper into the knowledge graph construction process. Yun Ke, over to you. Thank you, Jacob. And hi, I'm with Yu Wei, who's an expert in knowledge graphs. With his help, we are going to learn more about the entire process involved in building a general domain knowledge graph. Hopefully, by the end of this session, you will have a clear understanding and be able to build a graph by yourself. Okay, Yu Wei, let me kick things off by asking, what is a general domain knowledge graph? Thanks, Yun Ke. So, in terms of general domains, a knowledge graph is just like a, an encyclopedia, which extracts knowledge from various data resources, such as databases, data sets, and documents gathered from online web pages or social media. It's important to know that the knowledge in the knowledge graph is not limited to any language or domain. I guess the most popular example on the internet that you may be familiar with is the Wikipedia. Okay, uh, so from a very general perspective, how do I go about creating a knowledge graph? Well, you can see from the a flowchart that the general process involves four parts extraction, fusion, processing, and application. Let me go into each part into a, in a bit more detail. Sure. So, in Ke, what would you consider knowledge if we are talking specifically about people? Well, um, I guess perhaps the online profile of a person is considered knowledge, right? Um, so their birthday, um, their occupation, and um, their nationality, um, 
as well as the relation with other people around him, for example, his friends, his neighbors, and partners, right? No, exactly. In fact, we refer to people as entities. Mm. An entity is a real-world object, such as a person, a location, a organization, mm. or product. So profile and relations of people, as you just mentioned, are considered attributes of entities and uh, relations between entities. Mm -hmm. uh, before knowledge extraction can take place, we need to define the knowledge schema. Mm -hmm. More specifically, what kind of entities are in the graph and what relations and attributes do their entities have? Okay, so after we determine that info, what's next? Well, we can then start extracting knowledge from the, our data resources. Mm -hmm. We generally split, split the data into three categories, a structured, semi-structured, and unstructured. Let's see. And the structured data example shows people in a database and you can see the information is very clear and neat. It's easy to read. The semi-structured data example shows the product of a head site on Amazon. Mm -hmm. The format is uh, as neat as the structured data, mm -hmm. but it's still, uh, oh, sorry, uh, the format is not as neat as the structured data, right. but it's still easy enough to read. Right. And the final, mm -hmm. the final one, un unstructured data, it's just text written uh, naturally, as mm -hmm. you would see in a book. Okay, so I guess there's a pattern there in terms of extraction. I got it. The, the more structured data, mm -hmm. the easier the extraction. Mm -hmm. Okay, as structured data is always separated into clear categories, it can be directly passed into knowledge schema. The example you can see show the age and the city attributes, mm -hmm. as well as the relation attributes of a person entity. Uh, their assorted knowledge schema is also shown on the right. right. Uh, if we move on to the same structure data, let's go, let's go back to the Amazon product example. At the first glance, the Amazon product information seems structured as it's displayed in a table form. But it's because it's written in HTML mark language. Right. Its entities, attributes, and the relations are separate by text, resulting in semi-structured data. Mm -hmm. It may seem complicated, but parsing this kind of data is not too very difficult. And right. it, it can be easily achieved according to HTML uh, extraction rules. Okay, so based on what you said previously, the unstructured data will be the thickest to yeah, extract, that's right? That's right. <laughs> Let's take a basic example of unstructured data about Taylor Swift. Mm -hmm. Extract this kind of data, it's a lot of, com uh, it's a lot more complicated than our other examples. Mm -hmm. Well, um, if we just read from these text, um, I think the information, it seems easy enough to extract the information data, right? Uh, we can see her name here is Taylor Allison Swift, and uh, the date of birth is December 13, 1989, right? And um, we can see her occupation, and uh, some examples of her career achievement, like uh, Speak Now, and uh, he won two times Grammy Awards. And that's the thing. Mm -hmm. For you and me, it's mm -hmm. easy to get information mm -hmm. we require out of the written text. But how can a machine know what's important and what's not? Right. The current method we use is Natural Pro Language Processing, mm -hmm. NLP for short, right. which focuses on teaching machine to understand and process natural language. Mm -hmm. This has been a long-standing task in computer science and artificial intelligence domain. Mm. Hey, can you show us how it works? The first step is to extract entities. I have marked the entity to be extracted in orange. We can now use the string matching, which is extremely, extremely simple, mm. but it's clear the machine already knows the entities in advance. For example, in this, uh, if the machine knows the 
Taylor Ellison's wave is a similar entity. Mm -hmm. It can extract the specific information from a series of texts using string matching. Unfortunately, it's uncommon that a machine ha has already known the, all, all the entities in advance. And newly developing en entities are also emerging. Mm -hmm. Therefore, the much more complicated mess method is actually the most common. All right, let, let's get into it. What is it called and how does it work? Okay, <laughs> if I can, uh, oh sorry, I can only scratch or dis surface for now. Otherwise, we'll be here all day. Okay. The technology is called sequence living. Basically, each word in a sentence is given a label. You can see here, a, a B label represents the word at the beginning of an entity. Mm -hmm. An I label means the word is in the middle or end part of an entity. An O is given to words that are not a part of the entity. Mm -hmm. Although the, this is a complicated procedure to undertake, mm -hmm. researchers and engineers have developed publicly available tools for us to crack the problem. You can refer to uh, Stanford NER for, from Stanford University or the NLTK tokens for further guidance. Okay, so if that is uh, energy extraction, uh, you also mentioned the relation information earlier on, right? So how do we go about extracting that? Okay. That seems difficult. Generally speaking, there is a clear synt uh, syntactic logic to sentences. Mm -hmm. A think of the relation between an, a subject uh, and an object, which is direct uh, defined by the predict. Uh, let's analyze this sentence. Okay, uh, we've got a sentence here. The Swift is th Swift's third studio album, Speak Now. Um, 2010 spawned the two-time Grammy award-winning single "Mean," right? Would you help me to pick out the subject, object, and predicate? Mm. I think um, the "Speak Now" is a subject, uh -huh. and uh, the "spent" uh, is clearly the predicate, right? Um, well, the um, the a Grammy award-winning single "Mean" is the object. Oh, you are right. <laughs> This uh, re represents a piece of knowledge. Mm -hmm. The album entity Speak Now contains the song entity Men. It's in, it, 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 it indicates a passive re relation. For relations that are harder to recognize, we can retort, resort to uh, semantic space representation. Mm -hmm. If the sum of semantic vectors of a Speak Now and Contain, uh, are very close to the semantic vector of main, we can be sure that the two entities have this relation. Okay, so um, finally, what about uh, extracting the entity attributes? attributes. Usually, mm -hmm. entities have mm -hmm. their own attributes patterns. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, an entity followed by a date, enclosed in brackets, uh, this means the data, the data is directly attributed to the entities. Mm -hmm. Look at this exam example. A Taylor Swift, Alice, uh, Taylor Allison Swift, mm -hmm. born December 13, 1989. Okay. We can infer from this that the Taylor Swift is, is born in December 13. Mm -hmm. That's how we extract attributes. Okay. A more general approach is to treat the attributes as a relation to the entity. Then we can just use the previous methods we talked about in relation extraction. Well, um, if we think back to the original flowchart, it mentions actually four key steps mm. involved in creating the knowledge graph. And uh, we've only covered um, extraction. Uh, how about we move on to fusion now? Yeah, sure. Now that we have extracted a range of knowledge mm. from different kinds of data, it's time to fuse them together in our knowledge graph. 
Okay, Inka, mm. let's say I want to talk to you about the great MJ. Mm -hmm. Who comes to your mind? So MJ, um, I would say Michael Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> a fire response, but actually I was referring to the famous singer Michael Jackson. Oh, that's right. <laughs> Clearly, we mm -hmm. don't always think alike. Yes. So how can a machine distinguish mm. this difference? That's an interesting question. In fact, even if we are to say his full name, mm -hmm. uh, do you know Michael Jackson? In refer to in an effort to avoid confusion. Mm -hmm. However, in Wikipedia, there are forty-seven entries along for Michael Jackson, wow. including famous <laughs> writers, actors, and so on. I didn't realize that. <laughs> <laughs> the same entity, uh, the same mention of an entity, can mm -hmm. refer to multiple distinct entities leading to great ambiguity. So we have run into mm -hmm. our first talent, mm -hmm. entity disambiguation. Mm -hmm. We cannot afford uh, an attribute or relation to be linked with a wrong entity in our knowledge graph. Mm -hmm. The simplest approach for entity mm -hmm. disambiguation mm -hmm. is based on entity popularity. So that would be assuming that Michael Jackson is the most famous MJ. Yeah, sure, <laughs> but this strategy is not accurate and it's resulting in other Michael Jacksons mm -hmm. uh, having less and less information about themselves. Right. A better approach is using context to help. Mm -hmm. In this knowledge graph uh, example, we have four Michael Jackson mm -hmm. uh, candidates and uh, a, a paragraph is more context to help. Mm -hmm. It can help us to distinguish which is which. Uh, as before, we, I have marked the, the entities in orange. Mm -hmm. So if you, uh, if we already know the victory is a work of the singer Michael Jackson, mm -hmm. we can determine that this entity mentioned Michael Jackson refer to the first candidate in our graph. Okay, but there's clearly a problem, right? What if we're not familiar with the entity <laughs> right. victory? <laughs> in this case, the entities need to be disambiguated mm -hmm. collectively. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, so it's pretty unlikely that an English football player called Michael Jackson would have written a book called Victory mm -hmm. with a singer named a uh, Freddie Mercury, right? Right. <laughs> Finally, all the entities in this paragraph should have the most topical coherence. Okay, so what if the, um, the text is too short or there's not enough context to <laughs> disambiguate? Let's take the example of a short tweet such as I love MJ so much, mm -hmm. especially his famous song, Beat It. <laughs> yeah. Just beat it. We have extracted a new entity, beat it, mm -hmm. and a new relation. MG sang a song called mm -hmm. beat it. However, there is no context available. Mm -hmm. To solve this challenge, we have no choice but to extend the context. We can gather all the tweets from the same tweet user, as they may have mentioned MJ or beat it in another tweet with the uh, with more context. We can also gather tweets uh, containing similar con content with the same keywords. Mm -hmm. And finally, we can also uh, gather tweets which are similar in temporal or spatial features. Okay, another uh, interesting challenge we may encounter involves entity matching. Mm -hmm. In some circumstances, we extract two entities from different data sources, uh, and we, we will find that they are the same in, uh, in fact. Mm -hmm. When conducting knowledge fusion, we need to match the entity which are same. Here is the same uh, head site on eBay and Amazon, right, mm -hmm. Yunke? Well, um, clearly they have the same name. The product names are the same and their colors are both white well they are from different vendors um, and their connectivities is different one is 3.5 mm jack and one is wired but the other things are the same so i assume that they are the similar kinds of products right mm. but we need to check 
whether the schema and the features of the two entities are the same. Mm -hmm. Such a task is, is re relatively simple. Mm -hmm. We can calculate an average, uh, average similarity score by attribute alignment comparison. Mm -hmm. If the score is greater than the precise threshold, we are have convinced ourselves that they are the same entity. Right. Let's take a, a look at a more complicated example using Jackie Chan. Okay, we all love Jackie Chan. <laughs> <laughs> An entity such as Jackie Chan may have distinct role in different data resources. Mm -hmm. From one data resource, we we, may, we can extract that. Uh, Jackie Chan is a actor. Kovo star, <laughs> right? <laughs> he acts mm -hmm. in several movies. Mm -hmm. And from another one, the Jackie Chan uh, will be a singer. Yeah, a I singer. Did. He will as he uh, has as he has released many famous songs. Mm -hmm. Although their two these two entities are the same, they have different schemas. Mm -hmm. This case is relatively tricky and. Uh, Rely on, relies on deep learning on knowledge graph, as the same entity is very close in semantics and knowledge. I think that example really make a very good point. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So um, we have finished going through the knowledge fusion session of building a knowledge graph. Yeah, and in mm -hmm. fact, uh, the previous two sections, mm -hmm. extraction and fusion, take up the majority of knowledge graph construction. Mm -hmm. Okay, so why don't we briefly go over the knowledge processing and application part. Uh, okay, knowledge processing is mainly, enra uh, mainly used to enrich the detail of the graph. We can generalize a concept for a class of entities. Mm -hmm. For example, uh, uh, beat it, men, and better men all belong to the concept song. Right. as well as other songs. Mm -hmm. uh, we can also supplement the missing relations on the graph. Mm -hmm. For example, there is no knowledge to, in, in the data to support that uh, Peter is Greece's brother. Peter is Greece brother. Mm -hmm. But there is knowledge to support that uh, John is Peter and Greece's father. So oh, right. we can infer the relation between Peter and Gray. A brothers. <laughs> okay, so uh, after we have enriched the graph using knowledge processing, uh, our graph can finally support applications. And that's right. First, we have built a general domain knowledge graph based on our sufficient data. Mm -hmm. And then with the knowledge graph engine, our graph can support several applications, such as uh, intelligent search, intelligent Q&A, and intelligent recommendation. Mm -hmm. Thank you for joining us, Yue, and uh, sharing what you know about knowledge graph and construction. Thank you all of you at home too for lending us your time. See you soon. Thank you very much for running us through that. So how Huawei is optimizing its search engine technology. Jian Tang, please begin your keynote about Huawei documentation knowledge graphs whenever you're ready. I'm glad to have the opportunity to share with you the application of knowledge graph technology in Huawei information field. My name is Ao Jian Chang, and I come from the Information on Cognitive Technology Lab of Huawei 2012 Lab. We will focus on the application scenarios and technical architecture of the information knowledge graph. The concept of knowledge graph was first proposed by Google in 2012 and used to improve the accuracy of search results. In general, we think that knowledge graph is a large-scale semantic network that aggregates and expresses knowledge in graph form. In terms of the AI architecture, knowledge graph is located at the cognitive layer and is a key technology or cognitive intelligence. Since Google put forward the concept of knowledge graph, both academic and industry have raised the upsurge of researching knowledge graph, 
and there have been a lot of practical application achievements in industry. Now, let's look at the application scenarios of knowledge graph in Huawei information field. A graph is typically used to improve users' capability and experience of obtaining information. Traditionally, the search is mainly based on keyword matching. Sometimes the result is inaccurate because the machine cannot accurately understand the user's intention. However, in graph-based semantic search, because it's based on entities and has sufficient semantic information, accurate results can be directly displayed. In addition, the graph-based semantic information can be automatically aggregated and associated, which could further support the display of rich and comprehensive knowledge of entities in card form and the recommendation of other related entities. For Q and A scenarios, compared with traditional FAQs, graph-based Q and A is more powerful. First, based on the understanding of entity context, multiple rounds of dialogue can be supported to clarify the vague intention. Second, automatic inference can be performed based on the relationship between entities, and the related inference chain can be provided. Third, graph-based intelligent recommendation can be supported. In the Huawei information field, we use knowledge graph as a technical means to build a knowledge center to facilitate the interconnection and evolution of heterogeneous knowledge from multiple sources. From the architecture diagram, the knowledge center has the following benefits. First, Heterogeneous information from multiple sources can be aggregated, correlated, and centrally managed, breaking down information silos and discretization. Second, knowledge is highly structured and has rich semantic information that can be understood by machines. Third, provide rich and flexible raw knowledge query or more complex query and inference sources. Fourth, analysis results of application rocks can guide the knowledge-based construction and documentation writing. Five, knowledge graph contracty can support intelligent writing and generation of information. From the perspective of information production, Knowledge graph can transform traditional documentation production to intelligent documentation production. There are two typical scenarios. First, change the traditional document writing to KG-based intelligent document compilation. Knowledge center and intelligent writing technology with configurable business rules can support efficient recall automatic adaptation, and intelligent writing capabilities to assist document writing. Second, change the customized development and maintenance of traditional documentation web pages to real-time and dynamic generation of documentation GUIs. Document taxes or web pages are dynamically assembled and generated based on the knowledge center. Now, we know the four typical application scenarios of knowledge graph on Huawei information field. But what is the life cycle and technical architecture of information knowledge graph like? Actually, the whole process starts and ends with applications. The full life cycle consists of analysis and design of application scenarios, knowledge modeling, knowledge extraction and fusion, knowledge storage and management, knowledge application, and application effect evaluation. Usually, business experts should participate in communication on business requirements and applications, and the graph schema design. 
and the graph should support both automatic incremental construction and manual intervention. One of the core applications of knowledge graphs is the Q&A and reasoning. In a typical Q&A scenario, a user asks a question, and then we do query and inference based on the graph and return an answer to the user. The central question here is how to map user question to knowledge in the graph. The solution we design is semantic passing, retrieval and recall, and the semantic matching based on the graph model. The architecture consists of five modules, question handling, retrieval and record, knowledge indexing, knowledge calculation, and answer generation. How to automatically construct knowledge graphs? The construction involves two core issues. One is knowledge modeling, the other is knowledge extraction and fusion. Extraction is classified into structure extraction, semi-structure extraction, and unstructured extraction based on the data source structure. Different types of extraction use different technical means. Structure extraction is generally based on graph mapping. Link data or table data is mapped to graph knowledge. Semi-structured data extraction involves data in a certain format, but not strictly standardized. Generally, data extraction and conversion are performed based on rules. Unstructured extraction is mainly oriented to play text and is based on pattern matching or statistical learning. Currently, we have explored and, and practiced knowledge graph in the Huawei information field and built a one-stop platform for Huawei information graph. Based on the platform, we can do knowledge modeling, extraction, management, operation, and upper-layer knowledge applications, including search, Q&A, recommendation, and documentation generation. Jian Chang, thank you very much for running us through that. So I hope everyone's now clear about how Huawei is optimizing its search engine technology.